Moment of the FAMU National Alumni Association Virtual Town Hall. We are so happy to have you with us. And of course, it is sponsored by uh, Florida a and University and the FAMU NAA. We begin the evening with our invocation by our FAMU NAA chaplain, Mr. Keith Shannon. Thank you, Ms. Carmen. Um, good evening to our 18th president, uh, President Clark, and uh, to our 12th uh, university president, President Robinson. It's good to be with you this evening. Uh, good evening, Rattlers. Good evening to uh, the alumni board and to the administrators that uh, are with us from the university. Uh, it's just a joy for us to be able to join virtually. Um, many times as I uh, join alumni meetings across the country, either in person or virtually lately, um, I'd like to share some lighthearted stories. And so I'll share one this evening just before we do pray. Um, and this is about the smart worker. Uh, once upon a time, there was a very strong woodcutter who asked for a job um, with a timber merchant and he got the job. Uh, the pay was really good and so were the work conditions. And for that reason, the woodcutter was determined to do his best. Um, his boss gave him an ax and showed him the area where he was supposed to do his work. And the first day, the woodcutter brought home 21 trees. And uh, he was proud of himself. And the boss was proud of him also and told him, congratulations, uh, keep up the good work. And so he tried even harder the next day, he got up a little bit earlier, but that day he could only bring home 17 trees from his cutting. Uh, he was a little disappointed and uh, he tried even harder the next day, but he brought home even less trees. He brought home 10 trees that day and day after day, he began to bring home less and less trees. And uh, he started to, uh, get a little bit discouraged and thought that he must be losing his strength and his stamina. Um, but he went to the boss, uh, you know, and was clear with the boss and apologized and said he did not know what was going on. He couldn't understand it. And the boss asked him, asked that woodcutter, when did you last sharpen your ax? And the woodcutter said, sharpen? I've had no time to sharpen my ax because um, I've been very busy cutting trees. You know how many trees that I've brought you. And the moral of that story is sometimes we're working so hard and but working hard is not alone enough to achieve success. We have to work smart also. And so the woodcutter in this story was the best person to do the job, but he didn't have the right um, outlook on that job to be successful in his particular task. And so if we adjust our attitude, and uh, I know that, that we do some hard work volunteering for the Alumni Association, but if we just adjust our attitude, sharpen ourselves, work with those around us, then nothing's going to be impossible in our lives. Um, I want to take just a moment to uh, have us go into a moment of silence for Rattlers that have transitioned since we last met. Um, I won't mention a list of names. Um, President Clark will uh, share with us how we're going to pay tribute to the fallen Rattlers um, in, in just a few weeks. But if you would join me in uh, a moment of silence before we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the glory and beauty of this evening and we acknowledge your love and mercy, God. We Again, you've allowed the Rattler Nation to join from far and wide, and we pray that your spirit abides and resides with us in this 
virtual town hall meeting. Please cover and guide our conversation, God, and, and our deliberation. And we thank you for allowing Dr. Robinson to join us. And we pray for divine protection over President and, and Mrs. Sharon Robinson. Hear their name as they go in and, and go out. We pray for our university leadership and the decisions that, that they must make, God, especially during this time of pandemic. We ask that you would bless the students as they settle into the 2020 fall term. We pray for the faculty, the administration, the staff, God. We ask that you would just meet each and every individual and department at their specific point of need. Thank you for the resources you continue to send, God, and let us be good stewards of those. And if there is someone under the sound of this prayer, God, that is not sure how ends are going to meet, please provide calm and let them rest assured that all will be well. God, please bless our alumni association and continue to make our ideals realities. We offer this prayer in confidence that you, God, will hear and deliver us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much, Chaplain Shannon, for those words of comfort and inspiration. At this time, we will have greetings by the 18th president of the FAMU National Alumni Association, Colonel Gregory L. Clark. Thank you, Carmen, and good evening, Rattler Nation, and uh, thank you for being here with us this evening. On behalf of uh, the executive board and entire membership, we offer you greetings. We certainly appreciate all that you do uh, to support Mother Fam U, and uh, we're going to ask that you continue to stand by us as we make it through these turbulent times. We'll do it together. One team, one mission, one Fam U. A couple of notes uh, I want to give to you um, that's, that's going to happen in the near future. Uh, on October 3rd, the, the birthday uh, of our beloved alma mater, uh, your FAMU National Alumni Association uh, will hold an all-day leadership summit. Uh, and, and during that summit, um, we will uh, finish our general body meeting that started on July the 18th. Uh, we'll finish it up. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to uh, pay tribute to those uh, fallen rattlers that's done so much uh, in support of FAMU uh, over the years. And also during that symposium, we will hear from university officials and other alumni on topics such as recruiting students in a COVID environment. How do we advocate on behalf of the university in a COVID environment? And of course, uh, as we will always do at our national conventions, uh, when we do our parade of chapters, we will also raise money that day in support of, of uh, Florida a and University. Uh, and then at the end of that day, uh, because it is a birthday, uh, we will have our own virtual birthday party uh, for, for Mother Fam U led by our membership committee. So mark your calendar, October 3rd. Uh, don't do anything that day. We're gonna be all Fam U all day. Uh, when the sun come up and when the sun go down, we're gonna be doing all Fam U. So look forward to seeing each and every one of you. And again, thank you for all you do from the bottom of my heart in support of Florida a University and its students. Thank you, Carmen, and uh, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Colonel and President Clark. And thank you for your inspiration and desire to host another alumni virtual town hall as uh, this is a medium uh, for information and to enlighten so many who are joining us this evening. And we're happy to have uh, many of the members of our National Alumni Association Executive Board and chapter presidents from across the country who are joining us. We're so thankful to have so many of our loyal alumni and, and members and of course our whole FAMU lead. And we're glad to have you telephonically for those of you who are listening via phone and of course on Facebook Live for our town hall meeting. Our panelists tonight include our provost, Dr. Maurice Eddington, our vice president of student affairs, Dr. William Hudson Jr., our vice president of athletics, uh, director Courtney Gauthier, 
Of course, Colonel Clark will also be joining us for comments. Our Vice President of the FAMU Foundation and Dean of FAMU SBI, Dr. Shante Friday Stroud. And of course, our Director of Communications, Mr. Keith Miles and his team are graciously working uh, to, to help us navigate uh, through our mediums uh, tonight. But we want to begin with remarks by a distinguished uh, gentleman whom I have had the pleasure of working for uh, now three times, and I've enjoyed each of those uh, times. And uh, he's weathered many battles on behalf of Florida A&M University, this historic institution. And he's battled and weathered many storms. And now he continues to stand tall at the helm of leadership through unprecedented, perilous times of a pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 12th president of Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University, Dr. Larry Robinson. Well, thank you, uh, Ms. Cumming, for the very fine introduction. I continue to be flattered. Uh, but, but first, I want to let everyone know how privileged I am to serve in this capacity as the 12th president of Florida and m University. And so I want to, you know, just acknowledge uh, the chairman of our board of trustees, all of those members. Uh, uh, Trustee Lawson was in town today, actually bringing another daughter uh, to the Hill. Uh, I want to thank uh, the NAA National President, uh, Colonel Gregory Clark and his executive board, uh, chapter presidents, all alumni, friends and supporters. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you this evening. I've already appealed to uh, President Clark about allowing me a, a few extra minutes this evening beyond my typical opening remarks. Because it's so close to the time that I've been speaking you know, with our faculty and staff and, and others about the state of the university. So, so I want to thank you for giving me a couple more minutes this evening to just go through some of the highlights um, of this evening. Also, too, I want to thank the members of the family leadership team for joining us this evening, in particular this evening's moderator, Assistant Vice President for University Engagement and Alumni Affairs, Ms. Carmen Cummings. So, so just last week or so, I spoke to and welcomed our uh, new and, and veteran faculty members back for the fall semester during our annual pre-planning conference. I shared with them, as I will share with you, my assessment of the state of the university. I declared it to be the best ever. Now, I must admit, while speaking to the NAA's Northeast Region uh, meeting on Sunday, I modified that a bit. And, and here's that modification. This is the best ever, except for the time that you attended the university. So you can lower those fangs and we can get on with this talk. Because I know you would argue me uh, quite a bit about that. Let me tell you later why I believe that. Uh, I do want to start with the, 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 one of the greatest challenges that I believe we face, certainly in the modern era. And, and that is those challenges brought on by a very wicked virus that has impacted every <clears throat> aspect of our lives and our work. Thousands of lives lost, millions of jobs lost, businesses closing everywhere you look. Lives disrupted and lifestyles have been radically altered. Some people are extremely pessimistic and skeptical about the future of many of the cornerstones of our society, including the future of higher education. However, your commitment to the success of our students and dedication to our institution have and will, in the word of our alma mater, fend them through the skeptic night. I want to thank you for contributing to making Florida A&M University a nationally recognized institution of higher learning. Thank you for recognizing, too, the potential in every student or recruit you encounter and believing in the ability of your alma mater to untap that potential and transform our graduates into difference makers and leaders like many of you have become. I feel extremely privileged to serve as the 12th president of Florida A&M University. I've learned so much <clears throat> during my tenure here and I'm astounded by the long record of achievement, <clears throat> service, and generosity of you, the alumni of this great institution. As we plan, strategize, and look to the future, much of our progress is a direct result of your hard work and commitment. <coughs> I value 
the FAMU has given to all of us, especially in light of the fact that some 40 million citizens' employment has been disrupted by the pandemic. And as the panic, pandemic has ravaged our communities and the social rest has um, unwakened, awakened uh, awareness of so much more that is wrong in our society, I firmly believe that the nation's need for you in Florida a &M University is the greatest ever. <clears throat> Despite the pandemic, <coughs> excuse me, uh, great things are still happening every day on the highest of every hill, the uh, highest of, <clears throat> of seven hills here in Tallahassee. And every morning, <clears throat> I start my day by appreciating the opportunity that I have to make a difference and to help others. And we are truly making a difference here at Florida M University. As a result of our team professional assessment and recommendations, you, you, you might <clears throat> not be aware, but we were the first institution in the state university system of Florida to declare a state of, a most of emergency. Additionally, <clears throat> we expeditiously developed new policies allowing our staff to transform to remote work in this new environment. Some of you probably remember the early days <clears throat> when we started, seemed like years ago, but only months ago, uh, the Bragg Stadium COVID-19 testing site. To date, <clears throat> nearly 35,000 people have been tested. That was supposed to be a two week, 2,000 person experiment. But through the hard work of Dr. Cynthia Harris of the College of Pharmacy, Ms. Tanya Tatum, Director of Student Health Services, uh, we have established one of the most successful community-based COVID-19 testing sites in the state of Florida. And while that's a partnership with the Bond Community Health Center, the Florida Department of Emergency Management, and the Department of Health, you should also note that it was a FAMU alumna, Dr. Samuel Robinson, a DRPH recipient from our own Institute of Public Health and Deputy Secretary of Health for the state of Florida that played a key role in establishing that site. I also must <clears throat> recognize countless volunteers, faculty, staff, and community members who work at the site each and every day to get his work done. Uh, just recently, we uh, added not only PCR COVID-19 testing at the site, but we're also now conducting uh, antibody testing at the site as well. <clears throat> if you are anywhere near Tallahassee, uh, please come by the site Mondays through Saturdays and get a test done free. Pandemic has indeed altered life as we know it. However, we have developed a comprehensive reopening plan to facilitate our operations in this new normal. Our Chief Compliance and Ethics Officer, Ms. Rika Calhoun, leads our Operational Continuity Task Force, and her team has done a great job. We've shared these plans with you, the FAMU community, through virtual town hall meetings, and created a reopening website, which is located at famu.edu slash forward slash reopening plan. In fact, <clears throat> Now, this uh, town hall itself is part of our communication strategy about letting people know what's happening here on the Hill in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. So as we move forward into the fall semester, COVID-19 will impact our enrollment and our budget. Our students and their families are dealing with the effects and some will even face mental health challenges because of it. I think this creates, creates another opportunity for us to show uh, excellence with caring. I must also express my appreciation for the Federal CARES Act funds that have um, made such a tremendous difference. These funds will help offset some, but not all of the financial challenges resulting from COVID-19. We will need to be very strategic in our expenditures this coming year in order to preserve the financial integrity of this institution. I'm proud to be a leader of such a great faculty, staff, students, and alumni who strive each day to help meet our goals and fulfill our mission. It is also an honor to serve a board of trustees that not only sets a high bar, whose members immerse themselves into the battles 
needed to ensure our success. And speaking of success, here are just a few of the reasons that I declare the state of Florida a &M University as the best ever. And once again, please pardon my modesty. And, and I do this and say this with the exception already acknowledged. First, we are extremely happy with the 13.3 million in, in performance-based funding we received this year. FAMU improved in seven of the 10 performance metrics, scoring 73, a score of 73, a three-point increase over our score in 2019. This is a best ever. <clears throat> FAMU continues to make news with a number of national rankings, and just to name a few, the number one highest <clears throat> ranked <clears throat> Public university. Mr. President, I never interrupt you, sir, but I know that you have been in that tie since we met early this morning. <laughs> and you, I, I talked about how you battle through mm -hmm. uh, things on behalf of FAMU, and your sinus allergies are trying to take you down, sir, but I know that you just need a moment to, uh, to grab a quick swig of one of your yeah. favorite uh, pops there. And yeah, you want us to add cocoa will get me through it, right? Yes, sir. You so thank you. I, I will shorten the presentation in light of this uh, attack on my, <clears throat> my senses. Yes, so, sir. So the number one public HBCU for research and development, number one producer of African-American doctoral degrees in pharmacy, pharmaceutical sciences, and administration, top HBCU producer of African-American baccalaureate degrees, <clears throat> one of the most affordable colleges in Florida, Number two, top HBCU STEM majors, a national top college for diversity and inclusion, a top college for economic mobility, nationally ranked for online excellence, and the number two greenest HBCU in the nation. <clears throat> and most recently, we were recognized by Cosmopolitan Magazine as the 25th most beautiful college campus. That is quite an honor when you think of all of the college campuses nationwide. So I must commend our staff taking meticulous care of our buildings and our grounds. The opening this fall, some of you have heard or read about the 700 bed residence hall, FAMU Towers, and the adjoining dining hub. You should have heard and read about the Center for Access and Student Success that will be opening later this fall, which will enhance student experiences for many years to come and quite frankly, I believe these facilities, in particular, the 700 bed residence hall, will become immediate recruitment attractions for future Raptors. Then, too, we have the student-funded new amphitheater with 100 additional parking spaces, uh, which will allow space for meetings, performances, rehearsals, outdoor markets, and festivals. Indeed, an extension of the set. In our 2020 accountability plan reporting year, we achieved a few additional best ever's. A four-year graduation rate rose from 22.5 to 27.7 percent, a 5 percent increase. And by the way, <clears throat> for those of you who have been paying attention, you probably noted that over the past five years, our four-year graduation rate has increased 100 percent. It's because of you, the support that you provide to helping us get students through uh, the rigorous educational experience at Florida a &M University. Our six-year graduation rate is now 52%. That is a 13 percentage point increase over the past five years. The Florida College S System's AA transfer degree three-year graduation rate has increased from 57% to 61%. That is above the state university system's average. And here's one that we're particularly proud of. We have reduced the cost out-of-pocket cost of students earning a degree at FAMU from $7,640 to $6,570. That is a 14% reduction in the cost to attend FAMU. That might not be <clears throat> the lowest ever, but it is indeed the best cost when considering our cost compared to other institutions in the state university system of Florida. And then I'll end, uh, on this note for now, alumni donation has increased by 60% in the past year from 4.8% to 7.7% for 2020. I can't tell you how many more of these we have. I'm gonna to go to one point that I, I do want to, to um, 
share with you because all of those numbers and statistics are fine, <clears throat> but here's where I think it really matters the most in terms of a university in general. So as we look back over the past few months, FAMU has been on the forefront of social and racial injustice. The national unrest sparked by the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota, touched off out outcries and protests around the country, in fact, around the world. As we did 64 years ago when FAMU students protested peacefully during the Tallahassee boycott, we once again find ourselves on the front line. Alumni have taken the lead. I'm extremely proud, as I know you are, of Atlanta Mayor, alumna Keisha Lance Bottoms, and St. Paul, Minnesota Mayor, and alumnus Melvin Cotter, who are both standing tall and leading their respective cities. In fact, Mayor Carter was a summer virtual commencement speaker. He challenged the 400 newly minted alumni to face the global pandemic, economic despair, and intense racial system tensions like Ratliff's do, head on with courage and resolve. <clears throat> and then there's this. Despite which side of the political aisle you find yourselves on, you must be amazed by the fact that Senator Kamala Harris, a graduate of Howard University, has been selected as the vice presidential candidate for a major political party. A woman, a black woman, a minority woman, and a graduate of a historically black college or university. Now, of course, you all know that um, Senator Harris is also an AKA. And so I think immediately she picked up a few million votes <laughs> as a result of that. But I do know <clears throat> and anticipate that the AKAs, as many of you, will get involved in the electoral uh, election process over the days and weeks ahead. But I do want to say this, that while it is amazing, that Camilla Harris has had this, this major achievement. It's just as amazing to me that one of you, one of our alums, a 2011 political science graduate from FAMU, Vincent Evans, has been selected to serve as her political director. I mean, rather, y'all are hitting it on all levels in all places. I brag about the fact that from FAMU, you can get anywhere. So congratulations for, for all the work that you do in support of Florida a and University. You, you inspired, many of you inspired or taught Ms. Lance Bottoms, nurtured Melvin Carter, and some of you even motivated Ms. Evans to perform beyond his own expectations. That's what Rattlers do. And finally, you should know that FAMU is going to continue to move forward even through these unprecedented times and rapidly changing landscape in higher education in Florida and the nation. The work that you do on behalf of the university is not going unnoticed. We have been recognized nationally and globally because of the great faculty, staff, students, and alumni who have contributed to this great institution. The word is out about Florida and m University. Thank you. And thank you, the 12th president of Florida A&M, who has truly been in the grind, when I tell you, since this morning, and he has had that <laughs> since this morning. And I know you were battling again. Uh, sinus allergies are a beast, but yeah. you can't. Thank you so much for the inspiration and for highlighting all the great things, including all of our academic accomplishments, reminders of uh, how we have to be the mouthpiece on behalf of Florida A&M as alumni and ambassadors to help convey the great things that are happening at FAMU. We'll let you have a moment and grab that uh, Diet Coke and we'll serve <laughs> with you, uh, Mr. Thank President, you. so much again. Our focus tonight is, of course, the Rattler uh, Reopen. And again, the great things that are happening at FAMU as we continue to move forward amid COVID-19 with the return of students, faculty, staff, and administration to the highest of Seven Hills. Uh, many of you have already started moving questions our way, and we will do our very best to try to acknowledge those throughout the broadcast tonight. You are watching the alumni virtual town hall uh, meeting that is showcased tonight on Facebook Live and telephonically as well. Dr. Robinson talked about the rapidly changing academic landscape. Who better to talk about that than our academic general who joins us now, Provost Dr. Maurice Eddington for remarks. Dr. Eddington, are you with us? 
I am. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, and uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, President Clark, it's always a pleasure uh, to have some time to come and speak to our, our most passionate, loyal group of stakeholders at the heart of the institution. And I just wanted to say hello to all and give you some very brief updates on where we are with respect to uh, preparations for the fall semester. Um, classes are scheduled to begin next week. Um, our colleges and schools, our deans, our chairs, our directors, our faculty have been working extremely hard to get ready for the semester. One of the major initiatives that we undertook over the last several months was to provide um, a very focused, aggressive training program for our faculty around best practices for teaching uh, in uh, the online arena. And so we train um, upwards of 500 faculty this summer through our Office of Instructional Technology. And, and, and we set an expectation for our faculty that um, they would participate in the training and, and, and they would position themselves to offer an excellent learning experience um, for each and every student this semester. And so I wanna commend the, the faculty for uh, participating in that uh, effort. And, and the institution invested uh, over a million dollars to provide support for that initiative. We felt uh, it was very important. Dr. Robinson said this is a major priority. Um, let's do what we need to do to um, work and prepare our faculty. And we, and we want to acknowledge the, the CARES funds that we receive uh, for, for playing a major role in, in allowing us to um, complete that initiative. And so we are really um, focused on uh, next week and opening up the classes. Most of our classes will be taught remotely, um, but we do have uh, a, a variety of courses sprinkled across the curriculum at the um, freshman level up to the graduate and professional levels. Uh, we will have students on campus. We will have staff and faculty on campus, um, but we try to put a premium on um, offering services uh, and classes face-to-face -face that were necessary, while at the same time uh, ensuring that, that we could provide a safe environment by offering remote classes. So, so there's a, a, a large proportion of the classes will be remote. And um, I think um, the, the programs have done all they can do to get ready. And everybody's excited for, for what the semester has to offer. So I'd be happy to answer any specific questions that you all may have around our academic enterprise and our preparation efforts. Thank you, Carmen. And speaking of that, thank you so much, Provost. Uh, one question uh, that I received earlier today, um, is there any indication, one, of how many face-to-face -face classes, I know that uh, classes officially start on the 24th, but what will those face-to-face -face classes look like? Uh, what safeguards might be in place to protect faculty? Uh, example, uh, face shields uh, for uh, lecture areas uh, and for instructors. And uh, of course, we know that students will be required uh, to have masks, but what about safeguards in the classroom? Yeah, um, so th there are several different um, approaches that we've taken. Um, one, it does start with the individual having uh, the appropriate PPE, and that includes um, ma masks for each individual person in the room. We work to space out the seating in each one of those learning spaces, so students are going to be required to sit a certain distance from each other um, and, and we've reduced the number of students um, in each classroom based on social distancing guidelines. And then in some classroom spaces we do have um, shields up uh, in some spaces, not every space, um, but primarily we've taken the approach of trying to, to rely on the PPE for the individuals and, and remaining socially distant um, while in the space uh, and, and really ensuring that we educate our students about it, the importance of adhering to those social distance um, guidelines. And so we're putting a premium on, on personal responsibility uh, and, and education and training um, to help safeguard those environments. Thank you so very much, uh, Provost. We may be circling back to you uh, later in this broadcast. As we move forward, um, we're getting some questions about uh, scholarship dollars and I, I, I was, others were chomping at the bit about um, how move-in day is going or how move-in week 
has gone. And for more uh, on those issues, please join us now. Um, Dr. William Hudson Jr., our Vice President of the FAMU Division of Student Affairs. And there are a lot of questions here. Dr. Hudson, I will let you make your introductory remarks as I am uh, reading these questions and we can uh, uh, fire away when you're ready. Um, good evening, Carmen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Carmen, I've already answered the questions, so I put it out there already. All right. Well, would, <laughs> would, you, would you care to share? Uh, I will. I'll, I'll do that. Uh, at least some appetizers, if you wouldn't mind, academic appetizers. Okay. Um, first, I want to say thank the alum. I want to thank the alumni for all their support uh, of Florida a and University, as well as myself in the Division of Student Affairs. Without you, we couldn't recruit the best and brightest across this nation, across the world. Uh, because of what you have done, you set a standard that people look up to. And we continue to need you to help us recruit the best and brightest. Um, move in has gone very well. Uh, we have about 656 students as of this morning that checked in. There are more now because students are checking in daily. We've spread it out over the course of a couple of weeks uh, to ensure the safety and security of our students and their families, as well as our faculty and alumni that are also visiting campus as well. Um, we will continue this process. Uh, move in continues in Village, Truth, Pattyfoot, Sampson, and Young today. Um, parents have been very appreciative of the staggered move in. Mm -hmm. uh, they appreciate having that distance and the concern and the cleanliness that we've been taking care of the facilities as well as the opportunity for sanitization as well. Uh, the towers will continue to have students moving in uh, through this week and maybe even parts of next week as well. Uh, but we're very excited for the three projects that we have going on in the division. I think this is the first time in the history of the university that we've had three such projects uh, at the institution. We have the FAMU Towers that's being completed. We have the CAS building, which will be opening hopefully this fall. And we also have the amphitheater that will open as well. It's, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. The thought of the amphitheater in this climate really comes to fruition in having outdoor activities for our students, faculty, and, and staff. So some of the questions that I've received uh, previously is about scholarships. How will the scholarship process be handled this year? Uh, at the present moment, we are still looking at having the ACT and SAT scores. Um, we know that some are being canceled, but the due date for the test scores will be November 7th. Presently, we would like to have all applications completed by September 30th, and I think I'm gonna extend that date to October 15th to make sure that all the applications are submitted on time. You can submit your application uh, without the test scores because we know the test scores will be forthcoming. Uh, one of the items that we also have as part of our application process is the Alex placement exam. That will continue. And so, however, this year it will be administered virtually. So students will be able to take the Alex from home. And so we're planning to work with students and their families to ensure that they have the opportunity to apply for the scholarships that we have. Now, please be reminded, we do not have infinite money. We have a designated amount for scholarships. So you need to make sure if you have students applying, they need to apply early because they have to be accepted to be eligible for scholarships. Once that deadline comes, I'm cutting it off. There will be no calling Dr. Hudson and asking for us to extend it. We will cut it off at that deadline because our goal is to let students know the amount of scholarships that they have received by January so that they can make an informed decision. So please, if you have any questions, reach out to me, 850-599-3183 or William.Hudson, H-U-D-S-O-N, J-R, 
at famu.edu. Uh, we look forward to having a great time on campus. We have several activities planned for students virtually starting on Thursday, but we need your help as well as you talk with students. It's very important that they adhere to the social distancing guidelines and the wearing of masks. We know that they will be tempted by a lot of off-campus activities and parties and gatherings but they must be reminded that they pose a danger to our campus if they do not abide by these guidelines. These are very strict guidelines and they must adhere to them. They are a part of the student code of conduct and we will be asking students to come and visit with me as well as the Dean of Students if they don't abide by those guidelines. And it's not going to be something that's gonna be pleasant because we have to protect the family. And it is all of our responsibilities to do that. So if you have students or no students that are here, we need you to reinforce what we're saying. Because if we don't, it can force us to shut down again if we have an increase in cases. We've seen what has happened at the University of North Carolina. It's also happening at other institutions. We have to protect the family. And so with that, Carmen, if there are other questions that people may have, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Hudson. Um, as uh, Dr. Robinson talked in, about in uh, his preliminary remarks this evening, the COVID-19 site at Bragg Memorial Stadium has just uh, had tentacles in terms of, of the service that it's provided uh, since April and has now topped more than 34,000 um, with the advice that you just offered relative to social distancing and other guidelines for our students. And based on what we've seen on uh, many uh, news broadcasts uh, across the country, um, what are the plans for the COVID site? Uh, will it extend well into the fall uh, through December um, for students and, and staff and employees? At this time, Dr. Robinson can answer that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, we have um, convinced the powers that be that this site is sorely needed, in particular for citizens on the south side of Tallahassee. But people come from all over the state and region uh, to the site to get tested. But as more people come back to town, students in particular, you know, faculty and staff are being engaged more than they were this summer. Yes, the de demand for the site will, will likely increase. And so we have you know, no, no certain date for it, uh, it, it um, length, but at the same time, we are very optimistic that it's going to be with us into the, in, you know, in, into the foreseeable future. Uh, at the same time, as you know, Ms. Cumming, we're looking at other options for, for testing you know, ourselves and um, some of those are beginning to materialize, but for now, I think um, the the um, the site on our campus is the best option we have available, and um, it is doing a wonderful job with not only taking persons in to get the test, but delivering their test results in a fairly timely manner as well. Yes, sir. And and to uh, your comment, I, I heard from a cardiologist just yet, just yesterday, uh, who works at Tallahassee Memorial, and he had uh, strong kudos for the operation there at Bragg uh, Stadium. And as I was explaining, even to uh, one of the community partners uh, yesterday as well, is that our uh, operation there is not tar target. Um, it fans out and receives uh, folks. I've even spoken to some people who have traveled uh, from Alabama to come down uh, to the Bragg site. And so I just thought I'd convey that to you uh, as well as another uh, comment from a parent that we just received uh, that was directed toward uh, Dr. Hudson. Uh, applause for uh, the smooth uh, move in so far. I thought I'd let you know that uh, publicly as, as well, Dr. Hudson. Another comment also um, about enrollment, if you have any estimates that you could share at this time or for freshmen and uh, estimates uh, for upperclassmen as well at this time. 
So Maurice, you're just gonna leave me hanging like that, huh? <laughs> At right now, you're on, you're on mute, Maurice. <laughs> I can give you the fall comparison. As of Monday, we had 7,225 students enroll compared to 7,499 last year. So we're approximately 225 to 230 students below where we were last year. So we're trending really well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're looking, and one of the things I want to give a plug here for the NAA and the SOS funds. We are helping students enroll for the fall term through your generosity. So I want to encourage all alumni to continue to donate to the SOS funds because it helps our students stay enrolled or to become enrolled again. We have students that may stop out for a semester or even for a year and those funds help those students. So I want to applaud um, um, President Clark and, and all of his team that have really put up a great effort in raising those funds. We've given out a lot of money through those SOS funds. And then I also want to plug Dr. Robinson, which he don't really need one, but Dr. Robinson has provided financial assistance for students this fall. So September 14th, students will be able to apply for financial assistance and we will review their accounts to make sure they're eligible to receive those funds. But these funds will help students remain enrolled and enroll in the spring as well. So uh, FAMU has funding that is helping students stay in school during this epidemic that we have. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I would like to, if oh, I yeah. is coming, just to reiterate something I said in my discussions with the Northeast Region Sunday, and that is that Please encourage the young people you know, the ones you recruited, to come to FAMU to come on. Now, whether or not they make it to Tallahassee or they sign up online, I think I'm um, getting a head stop on a head start on everyone else who's out there talking about a gap year will be uh, a tremendous advantage to them because society is not taking a gap year, the problems are not taking a gap year, employers are still looking for talented students, and the sooner they can get through this experience at FAMU the sooner they get on to, to making a difference in the world. This concept of a gap year is some foreign to me, right? Uh, I, I didn't start right out of high school. It wasn't because I had the luxury of waiting. I had to work and take care of an ill you know, family member. And so for students who don't have to do those kinds of things, I strongly encourage them, uh, you know, before they give up, even if they have financial challenges, to let us know about it, give us a shot at it. Uh, we may be able to help. Very good. Thank you, Mr. President. And there are uh, some parents who are inquiring about the National Alumni Association uh, scholarships. And I know we've got a fantastic uh, tech team in our alumni tech room uh, being led by our uh, corresponding secretary, Ms. Artisha Polk, and our Southern Region VP, uh, Ms. Yolanda Pinkert. And I'd just like to suggest if uh, perhaps the two of them uh, could uh, tap into some of those uh, targeted scholarships for the Alumni Association, if they could find out uh, from the communities uh, they hail that perhaps uh, you all could direct them to uh, chapter leaders there in which they can um, connect with them and apply uh, for those uh, incoming uh, scholarships for freshmen or for sophomores uh, that are on the horizon uh, for them as well. Um, and Dr. Robinson, while we still have you uh, with us, you told us earlier about uh, federal funding amid uh, COVID. Are there any concerns? I was watching a report last night about uh, funds that may be lingering for some of the larger institutions, but are there concerns uh, for HBCUs, especially Florida A&M, um, about the well running dry? Anytime soon. Well, I, I want to. I, I believe that article was about that, that first round of uh, CARES Act funding that institutions got to provide to students, right? Uh, and I am certain that all but a small amount of money, Dr. Hudson and his team, after developing a very appropriate plan, uh, has gotten those monies out. Um, 
So, so that's why, you know, there are institutions nearby who are listed as those having money still in their coffers. But we knew that our best approach was getting those monies out to students as quickly as, as we could, uh, putting in there some monies for special needs that uh, Dr. Hudson and his team reserved. But by and large, those, that first tranche of monies of 16, 6 million, it's, it's largely in the hands of students who need it much more than we do. And while you're mentioning that, those dollars and the need for support uh, remain. Who better to talk about uh, those dollars, uh, CARES Act dollars, and, and, and what the needs are at this point um, than our uh, Vice President of the FAMU Foundation and Dean of that beloved uh, FAMU SBI, uh, Dr. Shante Friday Stroud. And Dr. Stroud, you have been deep in the trenches of, of trying to meet the needs of, of students from day one um, because the need has been so great. Uh, even though we have had millions of dollars come, come through uh, for specific needs, where are we now? Is the need still as great? So yes, Carmen, and um, hello and good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, hopefully, uh, Dr. Robinson, my... Uh, my audio is, is working better. I tried to get where I could have the most bars. So, um, but uh, let me make a distinction, one, between the uh, CARES Act funds, which are federal funds, and that's a whole different pot that uh, Dr. Robinson was just referring to that uh, VP Hudson and others are uh, managing. But we have our FAMU CARES uh, fundraising initiative. And for that, we are raising money to help provide students with support in the area of technology now. Um, so we've transitioned from travel, but now uh, mainly to technology. But what we are finding is that students are still having uh, technology needs, computer needs. And so um, all the dollars that you can give for um, to support FAMU Cares would be great, but also as VP Hudson mentioned, that there are still students that are in need of financial assistance from a tuition perspective. So those students who one either may need to clear a balance, um, a lot of times we find that that's what's the uh, difference in students registering early versus registering close to the class time start has to do with them being able to clear their balance um, to get down below the $500 such that they are eligible to register. So any financial assistance that you can provide students to help them um, not only pay for their tuition going forward, but potentially to help them uh, pay um, past tuition bills uh, will help us to be able to ensure that we um, continue to track well with our enrollment. Um, so again, uh, FAMU Cares, we would definitely ask that you give to that. There's always FAMU Rising where you can support. And then clearly, um, you all's uh, SOS fund for the National Alumni Association are definitely places that we know dollars can go to support our students to make sure that they're able to enroll and continue to graduate in four years. And, and BP, this is going to be uh, critical. We are uh, maintaining um, a high level of optim optimism as we attempt to move forward uh, with our Rattler reopening. Uh, but as we have seen across the country, um, a change is immediate at some institutions, as uh, Dr. Robinson indicated, uh, UNC uh, this evening, Notre Dame, um, made some drastic uh, changes in their plans. So remote learning um, and the technology that's required, um, that's right down your uh, FAMU CARES Avenue, is that correct? That is correct, Carmen. And what we're doing is trying to provide students with the laptops that have, that meet the specifications to mm -hmm. complete their coursework. Because what a lot of students found out um, when we transitioned in the spring was that either the Chromebooks that they had um, or the library that they were able to access was not available or did not have the uh, specifications needed for their classroom work. And so what we've been trying to do is provide students uh, with laptops that do meet the specifications for them to take their exams using lockdown um, and responders um, software uh, through Canvas to take their courses. So again, it's gonna be just vitally important for our students to have access to the technology. The one difference right now is, is that for students that are physically here in Tallahassee, they will have limited access, um, controlled access um, to the library, but students may not have that access, let's say to the computer labs in the libraries at the time or hours that they were accustomed to having them before. So to be able to have their own personal laptop that meets the educational specifications 
would mean a lot, again, towards helping them, them to continue to matriculate and stay on time with a four-year graduation. And BP, uh, and still we rise, and that's what our Rattlers do. Uh, some are asking more about the, the FAMU Rising uh, program, and I know that that's an initiative that's tied to our strategic plan. If you could just elaborate on the prongs of, of that particular program, where those dollars are directed to. Thank you, Carmen. And yes, the FAMU Rising campaign is definitely tied directly to the FAMU Rising strategic plan for the university. The four areas under uh, FAMU Rising are student scholarships, student success initiatives, uh, uh, FAMU athletics, and the arts and history. So again, student scholarships, student success initiatives, FAMU athletics, and the arts and history. So our goal is to support raise funds to support all of those areas because those are the areas where our students are the most and those are also the areas that have been identified in our strategic plan to help move the university forward. And VP, uh, while the trees and the rest of the forest are still working with you tonight with your with your Wi-Fi, how can we uh, donate if somebody wants to drop some money right now to FAMU Rising, how could they do that? They can do or that by going, they can do that. <laughs> Uh, they can they can text FAMU Rising all one word to four one four four four. They can go to the FAMU website and click donate now, or they can send a check to FAMU Foundation six twenty five East Tennessee Street, Tallahassee, Florida three two three zero eight. Again, that is the FAMU Foundation six twenty five East Tennessee Street, Tallahassee, Florida three two three zero eight. They can text. FAMU Rising, all one word, to 41444, or they can visit our FAMU website and click on Donate Now. Excellent. I'm a country girl, so I appreciate everything is, that's in the background. Thank you so much, VP Straub. Also, um, another uh, a question, and I'm not sure if this is for Dr. Robinson or Dr. Hudson. Um, this has uh, various bullets. Um, they applaud our, our efforts and our operation uh, to, uh, to meet the needs of, of thousands uh, who require testing. Uh, will there be an effort to do uh, rapid assessments, rapid testing, as we are hearing about in, in other communities, other sites? Um, I'm not sure if that's a Dr. Robinson or a Dr. Hudson. And Dr. Hudson, I know this is for you. Um, what efforts are being made uh, to bolster um, safe, the, the safety division, um, the security division in the wake of all the reports that we've been hearing relative to uh, parties near campus, on campus, uh, and at other institutions uh, to try to safeguard uh, that and prepare when our students truly come back uh, full force? So can I answer the first question first around the rapid testing? Um, I just want everybody to, to know that our state Division of Emergency Management is, has the purview over what con constitutes a legitimate uh, test in the state of Florida. There, yeah, there are rapid testing sites um, uh, in, in, in the state of Florida where you can get you know, good results, fast results, fairly reliable results. Uh, however, that's not the way our, our site operates at the time being. Uh, as we explore options, uh, as we are exploring other options for the university. In addition to that, uh, we, we will have that as one of the options we pursue. Uh, but those, are, those talks are in the formative stages. We're not quite there yet, but it would be to our advantage, as you might imagine, to have that capability. And, and that's what we're working on. Okay. Okay. Is Dr. Hudson still with us? I am. And will you repeat the question? The question. Dr. Robinson uh, made me forget my answer. Oh, the no, question you were, was. You were looking at that bottle of hot sauce behind you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he didn't extend us an invite. Did you notice no, that? <laughs> we'll get him. But uh, Dr. Hudson, um, um, your uh, division encompasses the, the FAM UPD. Mm -hmm. um, what efforts are being made to bolster security in the wake of increasing numbers of reports that we're hearing about social gatherings on, in other campus communities uh, so that uh, by the time students come back and in the truest sense, we will be prepared um, and ready for that? 
Well, first of all, it's everyone's responsibility. Uh, students have an accountability measure that they need to understand that they should not participate in those activities. Uh, our campus police department is well aware, as well as Tallahassee Police Department and Leon County Sheriff as well. There's a local ordinance for social gatherings in Tallahassee. So if students participate, they will have to suffer the consequences that comes along with participating in those types of activities when it's an ordinance that you should not be breaking. And it's also a violation of the code of conduct. So we've also uh, have the opportunity to hire outside security that will work with us when we see that there's a need to patrol and do more. Please don't forget that we also have over 700 cameras on campus that we're constantly watching to make sure that our students and our faculty and staff are safe. So you can never say that anything's 100%, but we're just planning to be proactive instead of reactive, but it's everyone's responsibility to help. We know our students will get to the point where they'll want to go out and socialize. They'll post things on social media. So we will be watching and we will be reacting to what we find. So, okay. so could I add to that? Because I think yes. part of, there are two other elements to our strategy that, um, you know, first and that is educating students and faculty and staff alike about sort of the do's and don'ts. Not only why, you know, not only doing these things, but why they're important to do. And then, uh, you know, a lot of communication, a lot of signage around campus about, you know, the do's and the don'ts, signage about staying six feet apart and so forth. And then uh, finally, the, the three uh, presidents, uh, Jim Murdoch from TCC, John Thrasher from UF, uh, FSU and myself, uh, just today, uh, drafted a uh, an op-ed for uh, public publication in the Titus Democrats soon, we hope, that, that shares with all of our constituents, not only the students on campus, but the places, the businesses that they might encounter as well, uh, putting out this shared responsibility uh, for students, you know, putting out the fact that their actions could impact the lives of people, their livelihood, but, but also the university as well. And I think um, with what's happened around the country, perhaps it's going to register with them that, that you know, they might be back home with mom and dad quicker than they had planned. I don't think that's what they want to see. But, but more importantly, they could endanger, you know, themselves and, and someone else by uh, not being responsible in their behavior uh, during these very, very difficult times. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate that. Uh, Director Gauthier, you are on deck. Get ready, because you've got some big news to share. But in the meantime, um, I just want to circle back to, to President Clark based on um, several comments that VP Stroud made about the need uh, for dollars. I know that we've been hearing a lot about um, um, philanthropic uh, initiatives across the country and um, uh, the former uh, wife of uh, Mr. Bezos and um, million dollar, multi-million dollar gifts. And, and trust me when I say that uh, BP Stroud and her uh, fundraising team are in the grind, uh, pushing out a number of proposals uh, in various uh, pockets of the country in search of similar dollars for Florida A&M. But um, Colonel Clark, um, to the point that you made relative to uh, the Fall uh, Founders Day initiative, uh, tell us more about that. I know it was a difficult decision that you and the National Alumni Association eBoard made uh, to cancel that uh, national convention. I'm sure there was a reason uh, for that. But uh, I've also noticed that you're still trying to find a way uh, an avenue so that alums can give back to walk in lockstep with BP Stroud and trying to, to move us forward uh, with our fundraising initiatives. Dr. Robinson talked about uh, the fact that uh, we've seen a boost in alumni giving, so the timing is appropriate. Yeah. So we have a saying in the military, improvise, adapt, and overcome. And, and in this case, um, we will overcome what's in front of us, still get to that stated goal. 
uh, and that's to raise money uh, for Florida A&M University. Uh, could not have a convention, on the, everybody understands that. Uh, so we had to pivot and kind of figure out a way that we could still do this virtually and make an impact on the university. That's why we chose the, the university's birthday uh, to do this. And uh, that day, when you'll start seeing some information come out uh, about um, uh, what we want to do on that day, but we want everybody to give something uh, to, to FAMU on that day. Uh, we're going to make it easy for you to give uh, that day, and you can give to uh, whatever you want to give to, but uh, the NAA's emphasis will be on that day, uh, Save Our Students and the Rattle Athletic Fund. Uh, is where we see the, the largest impact we need to make uh, on that day. But feel free to give to whatever school, college and school you want to give to, band, whatever you want to do. Everybody give something. And everybody give no less than $18.87. Uh, <laughs> and so we've got a, a lot of loans. Uh, Colonel, Colonel Clark, can, I, can yes. I interrupt you for just a minute? Go ahead. Can people give what they would have spent going to the convention? Not eighteen dollars and eighty-seven cents, <laughs> but you would have spent probably close to eighteen hundred dollars going to the conference. So I'm sorry, I just had to put that stuff. <laughs> well, 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 I'm talking about everybody out there. No less than that, but I got it, Doc. <laughs> Those new graduates just getting out of school, no less than eighteen dollars and eighty-seven cents. As you try to try to find employment, but absolutely, uh, the money you would have spent going to the convention, the money you would have spent. Coming to football season, uh, coming to, coming to uh, Tallahassee football game. We're mm -hmm. going to take all that money uh, and give it to the university. And then keep your eyes open. Uh, if you know where there are opportunities that the Office of Advancement can touch uh, some larger donors, some corporate donors, you know, shoot them a note. Uh, shoot them a note and, and, and offer up uh, that opportunity or uh, referral to them. So, uh, we're going to raise some money. Uh, we're going to raise a lot of money on that day in support of these students. They've come back to the university, and now we got to stand in the gap and try to help them uh, get to the next level. So, Carmen, thank you for that, that, that intro, and uh, start, start saving your money because uh, I'm going to be asking for it uh, on October the 3rd. And uh, details on that uh, Founders Day celebration, uh, just embracing our beloved alma mater on October 3rd, and we'll have more on that uh, wonderful day of celebration forthcoming. Uh, we're getting some questions about donor dollars um, that are coming into the university. And while we truly applaud that, uh, there's one particular alum that is inquiring. And of course, while we appreciate that um, due to uh, uh, privacy directives, uh, we cannot convey uh, names associated with those donor dollars, but applause, applause, and we will definitely be checking uh, in the office tomorrow uh, to make sure uh, those contributions have arrived. Uh, the alum who is asking knows who the alum is, and I want to thank you uh, in advance of um, that inquiry and research that we will do tomorrow. Thank you so very much. Now, uh, to our Vice President of Athletics, who joins us now. Um, he never, there's never a dull moment because he's always um, on the hunt for, for money. Uh, go get it, go get it. Gaucher is with us tonight. Our Vice President of Rattler Athletics Director, Courtney Gaucher. And there was a big announcement, if you wouldn't mind uh, my asking about that uh, today, sir, if you could share that to just kick it off. Absolutely. Well, Carmen, thank you for the um, wonderful introduction, as you always do. Uh, greetings, Rattlers. Uh, President Colonel uh, Greg Clark, thank you for allowing us to come on uh, this evening. And to our very own uh, President, Dr. Larry Robinson, uh, greetings again. And, and there are a lot of moving parts. As Carmen mentioned, um, there hasn't been a dull moment since I've stepped foot on the hill. And, uh, you know, those, these are exciting times. These are unprecedented times for us in the Department of Athletics. Uh, many of you know uh, that the MEAC uh, suspended uh, all of our fall sports uh, due to the, the overwhelming facts associated with COVID-19 and the ability to produce a very safe uh, and healthy environment for our student athletes to compete in. Uh, this was a tough decision. Um, 
with a lot of emotion. There was a lot of thought process, a lot of work that went into that decision, uh, but it was the right thing to do, just given uh, where we are today. Uh, this morning, Dr. Robinson and I started the morning and uh, we will end the day together um, as we had a meeting with all of the NEAC uh, presidents and uh, CEOs uh, to discuss consideration uh, to move all of our fall sports, which would include football, volleyball, and women's cross country uh, to the spring uh, for some version of a spring season. Um, this model would align uh, very similar to uh, our SWAC peers and an opportunity to compete in the spring, again, if the virus permits uh, and the conditions around uh, competing in the spring are much improved from where we stand today. Uh, so that was uh, kind of a, a light at the end of the tunnel. However, there are a lot of things that need to happen in between. Um, continuing to educate our student athletes and our student population, wear your mask. Uh, a lot of those hopes and ambitions to compete in the spring are going to be based off what we're doing right now. Uh, and so we're implementing those practices um, as uh, about half of our student athletes have returned here to Tallahassee. Uh, several of our programs have already returned um, to some official workouts and conditioning, uh, which would be our men's and women's basketball programs. Um, but again, you know, overall, I, I think the morale is high within the department and, and within our student athletes. Uh, we all understand that we're going to get through this together. Um, you know, the testing protocols and all of the COVID-19 protocols that the university has required. Um, we were kind of the, the guinea pig, so to speak, with the first population to be back on campus uh, and to make sure that those things are adhered to. Um, again, I would I would totally be remiss if I did not take the time to thank uh, Ms. Tanya Tatum uh, with our, our University Health Services, uh, our Provost, Dr. Hudson, uh, our President, and all of our constituents, uh, Dr. Friday Stroud, uh, in helping us stand in this gap uh, to ensure that our student athletes have a safe uh, and inclusive environment to return to um, in, in the coming weeks. Uh, there are a lot of moving parts as we talked about some of the facility uh, upgrades that uh, we've embarked on. Um, people have seen the upgrades to the Gilmore Powell Fieldhouse. Uh, we are making tremendous progress uh, in seeing that project through. And I'd be totally remiss if I didn't thank our alumni um, who have stepped up, who have donated, who have supported, uh, who have jumped into some of the naming opportunities uh, and a matter of fact, I was, a, I was a little tardy jumping on the call this morning uh, because we had uh, a class uh, who stepped up and made a $20,000 commitment today. Uh, and so we are still in the business of, of generating resources for our student athletes. Um, you know, I will take this shameless plug to say we are the one unit uh, within the university uh, that cannot be supported through state dollars. Um, we are a true auxiliary in, in meaning uh, we have to be self-sustaining. And so all of the dollars that Dr. Friday Stroud and her team are raising through FAMU Rising for athletics, uh, all of the dollars that we're raising through the Rattler Athletic Fund and people investing in our program truly make the difference. Um, we have received a lot of questions about, you know, what's going to happen to my season ticket package? Uh, I, I've already paid for my investing in champions. Uh, we were waiting on uh, the announcement, obviously, pertaining to what uh, we would pivot to with the MEAC. Uh, there will be official communications coming out. Uh, we do not have a refund policy, but what we are going to offer all of our constituents and fans and ticket holders um, is a credit forward. Uh, there are some exciting things that are happening, um, but hopeful. Uh, of an opportunity to compete in the spring, um, but we're, we are still excited about our inaugural season in, in the SWAC starting 2021. And so uh, we are diligently working behind the scenes to put together a very, very exciting and comprehensive 2021 football schedule. Uh, so there are a lot of moving parts to that, uh, but we're certainly excited about the future of our program. Uh, we mentioned some of the facility upgrades to Gilmore Power Field House, uh, which include new locker room, roof, uh, and weight room improvements, which is done solely 
off of the commitments uh, through the Ratlin Athletic Fund to, to secure that facility and make sure that it's a first class facility for our student athletes. Um, but also uh, being able to artificially turf uh, our softball programs and initiatives for our women's programs. And um, we are so grateful for the commitment of our alumni, uh, but also our student government association and their unwavering support uh, during this time to make us, uh, to help us fill the gap. And so we're excited about what these facilities and opportunities will not only do for our student athletes and athletic program, uh, but in particular, the artificial turf will also service our rec program uh, and our general uh, student population, as well as the band uh, during times uh, where we need additional fields. And so we're certainly, uh, we're certainly excited about that and, and what the future will hold. Dr. Robinson mentioned earlier on this call um, that Bragg Memorial Stadium as a community asset has serviced our community in a time of great need, servicing over 34,000 people to date. Uh, it is no secret uh, that uh, we are fighting to make improvements to Bragg Memorial Stadium. So not only can we serve our, our stadium in a time of need, but the very next football season that we can also pack it with 34,000 of, of the rowdiest rattlers we can find. And so again, your commitments, your investments into our program during this time, um, it matters. Uh, and I can't think of a time that it would matter the most other than right now. Our scholarship costs, the cost to run an athletic program and provide our student athletes with a world-class experience don't change. As, as Mr. President said, uh, there won't be a leap year for those type things. And so this will truly be a year uh, where we need uh, our support of all of our constituents and our alumni to get through the year. You can give to uh, athletics uh, through several mechanisms. As Dr. Friday Stroud mentioned, checks directly to the FAMU Foundation, uh, account 0014, uh, through the athletic department website, famuathletics.com. And one of our newest platforms uh, that was released earlier this month, uh, HBCU Change. It is an application that you can download to your phone, link your credit card, your debit card, and all of your change will be rounded up to the nearest dollar and those contributions directly to FAMU Athletics. Again, I, I couldn't imagine being anywhere else other than on the highest of seven hills during this time. Uh, we're not going to cry about spilled milk, as I told the president yesterday when we spoke. Uh, we will get through this. The future of our department is bright, and I am so grateful and honored to serve as your director of athletics and to serve these student athletes. So, Carmen, thank you, and I do know the questions are will start to flood in. <laughs> And thank you for sharing that contributions to that uh, Rattler Athletic Fund. Those dollars are, are housed in the repository at the FAMU Foundation. And when you send uh, dollars to the FAMU Foundation, those are tax deductible. Uh, just a reminder that those are tax deductible dollars. And thank you. Let me let you go, Director Gaucher, so you can do what you do and go get the money. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we would also like to, to add uh, just a couple other uh, notes uh, relative to some of the questions that we've received. Uh, someone said, um, it's great to do fundraising. What about faculty and staff? Um, are they doing it? And the answer is uh, yes. Uh, Dr. Robinson believes in, in all of us leading from the front. We can't ask you if we're not giving uh, ourselves to Florida a and University. And most recently, um, uh, Academic Affairs uh, hosted and uh, the FAMU Foundation hosted the annual faculty uh, planning uh, conference for faculty and staff. And it was during that two day session um, that appeals were made um, and dollars collected uh, from faculty, staff and administration and support of a myriad of programs at Florida A&M University. So I just wanted to share that so that they know that, that we are all in step um, with the ideals of the uh, fundraising artery, and that's the FAMU Foundation. So I just wanted to share that as well. Um, if uh, there are no other comments, I know that it is after eight o'clock, and I was told that if we could to try to uh, keep this within the window of uh, an hour, 
Um, I know that today is our primary day in the state of Florida, but before we leave, I do want to give a shout out uh, to alums for supporting uh, the renovation project, especially the folks down in Polk County under the leadership of uh, chapter president, Ms. Doris Hicks. They just fulfilled a $45,000 commitment uh, to a renovation of the field house lobby. And that is the kind of giving that uh, President Clark was talking about. And we're gonna be doing a whole lot more of that on uh, Founders Day. And you'll be hearing about that uh, in just a, a few weeks. So Rattler family, that is all the time we have uh, for this evening. Thank you so, so very much for joining us. Uh, and we'd also like to thank communications uh, director, Keith Miles, I'm telling you, he and his team, uh, several of them are, are on with us tonight. Uh, I believe uh, Ms. Brittany Smith, uh, Ms. Veronique uh, George, uh, Mr. Andrew Scared are all a part of this tech mission from communications. They've been working so diligently to provide the necessary signage to help our students and staff navigate on campus uh, during this um, time of great uncertainty and, and, and safety is of utmost importance. Thank you. Also, thank you to Director Ron Henry and also Michael Simmons and the IT team in that division for their support of all of these town halls. You wouldn't believe how many town halls, uh, virtual town halls we're involved. Uh, and thank you so very much for your commitment to that, even after hours, and also to the National Alumni Association Tech Team for supporting this virtual town hall. And the programming is being recorded uh, through communications, so this will give you an opportunity to go back and refresh, review, uh, to hear some of the answers. And you can also go to our uh, coronavirus uh, website. Uh, that was also created with valuable information there. Um, I believe it's also going to be noted uh, and loaded on the FAMU NAA Facebook page as well. Whew. Many of you are also uh, watching and tuning in uh, to the uh, Democratic National Convention, uh, which is coming on uh, in about an hour uh, and a half. And uh, so we're gonna move out of the way so that you can check up on returns in the Florida primary uh, today. But before we leave, we have one final word from our fearless leader who again has battled even today through uh, many exhaustive tasks. But uh, thank you so much that at eight o'clock, you're still hanging tough. Dr. Robinson, please join us for final remarks. Well, thank you. Thank you, President Clark and members of the National Alumni Association for allowing us to speak with you this evening and all of the members of the senior leadership team who have taken time out today as well. We've all had at least a 12 hour day, but that's, that's business as usual for, for all of us, right? But, but I do want to, uh, while we're talking about politics, just a note, I got a text message while on this call that we have now uh, two family alums who are in the uh, Senate, the Florida Senate, right? Which is really, really amazing. And so uh, I'll tell you the one that was recently newly elected and the second one would be a quiz. <laughs> Sherry Jones, I just got a message that he was elected into the Florida Senate. So that's, that's oh. really, really great, great news. So, so who can tell me who the other senator is? Where? Okay. <laughs> Senator Powell is the, the other alum who serves in that capacity um, right now. Mm -hmm. And, so, and Mr. before you do your remarks, mm -hmm. um, if you could just give us just some highlights or just an update on, because this also just came in. Uh, someone is inquiring about the $10 million uh, proposal and the presentation that you all did uh, before the governing bodies here uh, locally yeah. in the in Leon County area. Just want to know what's going on with that yeah. as you... So we, um, we have asked the city and county, the Blueprint uh, Task Force for uh, $10 million to support the renovation of Bragg Memorial Stadium. Uh, they were voted unanimously last month to uh, get us past the first hurdle. Uh, I believe sometime in the next 30 days or so, uh, they will take it into the next level for a vote. And so we'll hold it firm uh, on our request because we think it's vitally important. We made the case, as uh, VP Gaucher has said, you know, um, you know, Bragg Memorial Stadium and athletics in general are 
you know, uh, economic assets for this community, not only the cultural things that take place in there with the football games and the band, a lot of revenue is generated, you know, throughout the season and in particular homecoming. So we view this $10 million as an investment that many might believe that the city has already received, but they certainly will continue to receive it um, uh, in the future. So we're, we're going to continue to push that issue. In fact, I just wrote a letter to them yesterday confirming our you know, request and for keeping that on course to move through the process as, um, as planned. And, and we certainly are going to continue to work on that. And so maybe I can end on that just a bit because one of the things we, we are really pleased with the National Alumni Association about has been your advocacy. Uh, you, you've worked very closely with our new, uh, you know, director of, um, you know, political affairs, whatever the title really is, uh, Ms. Macbeth. I know she's on, on the call yeah, somewhere. Government relations. She yeah, is. government relations. I just gave her a new title. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and and uh, we're willing to work more. And I think our working together will make a difference locally. Uh, statewide and at the national level. And as I said to the Northeast chapter, one of the things we're keeping our eyes on uh, nationally is the status of the, <clears throat> the next round of CARES Act funding. And so, you know, if you need some help with us, we can help you write your local, well, your state, uh, your federal representatives and, and senators on getting that stuck, on getting that past the bottleneck that is in because at last look, there were significant funds for HBCUs in both the package on the House side and within the Senate. So, so as we uh, begin this school year, I, I, it will be one of our most challenging fall openings in history. Uh, and, and let me, however, encourage you uh, to keep striking from the top, whether we are six feet apart or 600 miles away, I want each and every one of you to feel a special connection uh, to this institution and the students that we serve. We have worked tirelessly to create the best environment that we believe we can for our students to learn and for our faculty and staff to work during these unprecedented times. We make tremendous progress in 2019 but I challenge each and every one of you to make the current year the best ever for the university. And so with that in mind, I want to thank you, President Clark, again for convening this meeting of the National Alumni Association in this town hall. It's been very, very helpful, I hope, for those of you who participated. And I want to encourage all of you to continue to work for the betterment of Florida a &M University. And if things get really, really, really tough and difficult, you, you must always remember, when the dark clouds gather on the horizon, when thunder and lightning fill the sky, when fate is but a glint in the eye of a fallen rattler and hopes are lost friends, when the sign of the chest grows weary from those hard-charging linebackers and the muscles in the legs grow tired from those hard-charging running backs, you must always remember that the rattlers will strike and strike. And strike. And, and strike, strike again. again. Let's go, Rattlers. Go, Let's Rattlers. Go. go, Rattlers. Rattlers. And thank you so much, our head Rattler, Dr. Larry Robinson, for, for being with us tonight. Thank you, Colonel Clark, uh, for being the inspiration to to bring us all together uh, again for information that is so valuable as we move forward with our Rattler Reopen. Uh, there are at least a couple students, I believe, who have inquired already about how to obtain uh, laptops. And so, Ms. Brittany, if you are still on the line, if you could reach out to those students and get their email addresses, um, we can reach back uh, to them with information as uh, they can uh, get on over to, um, well, not in person because we can't have visitors at the FAMU Foundation, but we can certainly uh, connect that person with the right uh, liaisons to assist with that. Thank you so very much. God bless all of you. Thank you so much again for your commitment to Florida A&M University. And thank you, Dr. Robinson, for being a fearless leader, guiding us through the skeptic days and nights. Remember, fam you today, fam you tomorrow, fam you forever. Have a great night. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening.